for his second budget as Prime Minister. Honorable Philip J. Pierre and his cabinet of ministers have crafted policies that would build on the socio-economic gains of 2022-2023 and also inspire positive economic trends throughout the 2023-2024 financial year. We as a country have good reasons to celebrate. Because of the economic gains we have made, notwithstanding the external challenges and concerns about citizen security. St. Lucia's post-COVID economic health continues to move from strength to strength under Prime Minister Pierre's stewardship. For the second consecutive fiscal year, St. Lucia is on course to register double-digit GDP growth of 18.1% in 2022, a marked improvement when compared to the 12.1% GDP projection in the previous year. Prime Minister Pierre has successfully nursed St. Lucia's economy from the sharpest GDP decline to the second best performing economy in the entire CARICOM region since assuming office mid-year 2021. The key economic indicators are trending in the right direction as a result. Guyana, St. Lucia and Barbados recorded the highest growth rates and St. Lucia and St. Lucia recorded the second highest growth rate after Guyana. For the first time since 2010, the national unemployment rate dropped to 19% by the end of 2022 and youth unemployment declined to its lowest levels in 13 years. We remain committed to driving overall unemployment and in particular youth unemployment down to single digits before the end of this parliamentary term. The overall deficit has been slashed from $287 million in 2021 to a projected $17.3 million by the end of 2023. Following three consecutive years of deficits, the primary balance returned to a surplus of $82.4 million. The current balance has improved from a deficit of $139.1 million to a surplus of $12.6 million in 2023. The debt-to-GDP ratio is down to 69.8% in 2022 from a high of 85.9% in 2021. The government has directed resources derived from the economic gains of the previous year to ensure local vulnerable populations receive additional support. A further $5 million has been injected into the public assistance program, increasing the allocation to $25.9 million. The St. Lucia Social Development Fund has distributed more than $17 million in social intervention programs. $7 million has been allocated to the home care program to secure care for the elderly. An additional $10 million has been allocated to the Ministry of Equity to provide social assistance to the island's needy. Our economic policies go beyond revenue generation and are also intended to assist those who justly and deservedly require assistance. The average St. Lucian household also benefited from financial interventions at the behest of the Prime Minister and his cabinet. The government spent $40 million to subsidize LPG cooking gas in 2022. $8.9 million in tax refunds have been paid out to date. $18.3 million in outstanding back pay was disbursed to public servants during the fiscal year. Government pensioners each received a one-off payment of $500 last year. At least 10,000 public and private sector workers will be exempted from paying income tax this year.
And NIC pensioners currently enjoy a 4.2% increase on their monthly payments. More relief measures will be implemented in the coming months. I propose the following. A rebate of $1 per gallon on fuel for all registered fishers. A one-off payment of $600 for government pensioners, payable in November 2023. A $600 increase in the one-time allowance to teachers, bringing the amount to $1,100. An extension of duty rebate on vehicles, which were available to frontline workers during COVID-19 to customs and correctional officers. I propose, Mr. Speaker, a one-year window for the local purchase or import of these vehicles, which will end in July 2024. The strategic choices comprised in Prime Minister Pierre's 2023-2024 budget is designed to respond to the challenges confronting St. Lucia with the aim of securing a better life for its citizens and inhabitants. The strategic choices for the 2023-2024 budget will target health, national security, and economic sustainability. From the office of the Prime Minister, Rihani Isidore.